Okay, this is the um, January 7th, 2019 meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're being recorded by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public uh, later on. We're also going to have a joint uh, meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 tonight. All right, first item on the agenda, we have um, minutes for, is that December the 10th? Maybe that's what do we mean? Uh, December the 26th. Has everybody reviewed the, the uh, minutes for the 26th? Yeah, they were good. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to, um, I've got a couple corrections for the part about the personnel committee, the paragraph about the personnel committee. Um, the statement that she rep that, that the person there represents the voice not only of reason but also of employment law. I mean, I, I don't know about that. But the, the select board represents the employment law for the town. But um, the where the, the the assertion that the gr the policies pertaining to the grammar school are not compliant that was her opinion. I disagree with that opinion. I disagreed with it then. And I don't. I, I just have a problem with stating that as a fact when that's just her opinion. And um, and I actually talked to her about that. And it's more it's more more accurate to say they weren't phrased in the exact precise way that she want, wishes them to be, rather than uh, condensed into one policy. They're spread out over six different policies because it was a change in law that affected that many policies. And she prefers that it be synthesized into one policy. But that's not that's not the same as saying that the grammar school policies are not compliant. So I take issue with that statement. Um, but this statement reflects what we, mm -hmm. what was said at the meeting. Yeah. Right. Ago. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, I agree, I disagreed with it then. So, I mean, it, yeah. it's, a sta it's stated as if it's fact. It was her opinion and I disagreed well, with her opinion. We, we, so. How about saying voiced her opinion yeah, instead of noted? There you go. And um, uh, David, it was David Barton who said uh, the, the bit about the voice of reason and employment law. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was just describing uh, Sue Fenton. Yeah. And how about her role on the committee? How, how about uh, uh, his, uh, his fellow committee members and said that in the committee, Fenton represented the voice? There you go. Yeah. Perfect. All right, you know, you know what? The, you know what? Yeah. Just. just Re review the tape again. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. You know. Uh, you know well, it, it, it was David who said that. So all right, we'll we'll, we'll tape we'll tape we'll, we'll table these until next meeting. Just just review the the FCAT tape and clarify that language. Yeah. So and while you're doing that, the discussion of how this employment handbook applied to school employees, I, it does not imply, apply to school employees as a matter of law. So I, I don't know what the discussion was about that, but whatever employment handbook they come up with does not apply to school. How employees. this employment handbook might apply. Yeah. I think. It doesn't. But that's okay. Carry on. <laughs> All right, we'll, uh, we'll table those for tonight. Uh, next item on the agenda. We've got uh, four warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $49,210, a payroll warrant for $112,220, and a payroll deduction warrant for $29,786, and then a student activity warrant for $1,628. I'll make a motion. We accept those warrants. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, meetings attended by select board members. Yes, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, wonderful collective bargaining sessions continuing apace. Uh, um, and uh, we went to another Frontier Building Renovation Committee go, looking over the financial documents. We, that was a lengthy meeting as well. We did, we did make really good progress. And I think we have more or less a product that is now ready to be 
more or less. But we had said that at the meeting before yeah, that, yeah, and the yeah. meeting before this that. This is true. So, so but, but we did make some good, I thought, I thought the changes I, that I, we I, came up with I made it too. better. Yeah. So I thought progress was made. Um, and that was enough. That was enough for holiday week, week meetings. So I went to the Frontier Budget meeting also. Okay. I think that was on the day after Christmas. Yeah. Right? 26. Okay. Uh, I didn't have any questions. There you go. Uh, it's a holiday. Yeah. I do um, get to see the lovely Julie suite at my collective bargaining sessions, though. So that is, there you go. Public comments. I don't see anybody from the public here except Ron. Do you have any public comments? No, I don't. No, okay, good. All right, old business. Uh, consider the draft marijuana host agreement policy. I can mention that uh, I sent around uh, a document from Montague, which was the first host agreement policy uh, that I or anyone I know ever heard of. Uh, they developed it fairly early, and that was the one that Andrea Lamas used for Buckland's policy, which is considerably different, um, and fleshed out a lot more and introduces the idea of the escrow account, uh, which she felt very strongly about. Um, these, uh, the, the points that you have regarding the escrow account and the draft license application, these were two things that uh, the attorney for the uh, current potential applicants uh, pointed out as, as being areas that he would, uh, he would like uh, more review on. Um, and I've just noted the things that uh, Andrea, uh, it, they're, they're her points with, with some clarifications of, of my own. Uh, so that, that's, um, those are the reasons to go ahead with both of those. Though, you know, again, the level of the escrow account, um, it could be high. Maybe we want to make a sliding scale for cultivation versus processing versus, you know, uh, what's the other lessons they give out? Uh, retail. Retail. Selling. Retail. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's. You know, that, that's where I would make the breakdown is in the type of operation based on, or, you know, the potential size, which is another reason to get the draft license application so that you can understand what their size is going to be. Though our bylaw limits it to small operations. So um, those are additional considerations. Mm -hmm. um, have you run it past Jack? No, I have not done that. Now, don't forget, Jack is, is also um, involved with uh, East Hampton. And, yeah. And, and they have, you know, a, an, an up and running operation. So I'm sure he has some, uh, some views on this. So let's, so let's run it by Jack. And, I, and there's also different options about when, when you say, you know, you're willing to or do, or do a sliding scale based on the type of operation kind of a thing. There's sort of the tax that you get and then there's the community impact fees that you can charge. And I, I, I kind of have an issue with reducing the tax on anybody. I mean, I, I just because it's so little to begin with and I mean, the state gets 12 and they're not, they're not sitting before state committees asking the state to reduce their 16 and a half percent. And then and, they're just asking yeah. us to reduce our three and a half percent. And again, that, that's that's not what's at issue here. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about reducing. Yeah, no. Why, why, why would we reduce no. the three percent? Well, he, he did mention that. He mentioned that that that, he, that they wanted a discount on the taxes because it's not because it's not retail, and um, right? Do you remember that? Um, but we're, but we're not at that at that stage. Yeah, yeah. we're not even close to that. Yeah. But I appreciated you sending this thing from Montague, but the, the document from Montague did not have an escrow account. And, you know, and Deerfield right, and Waitley right. don't have a policy and don't have an escrow account. The, the only so, towns I know with policies are Montague and Buckland. And so the only town right now would be Buckland that has an escrow account, and it does seem high. Uh, that, that I think it would be, I think that is what is really up for discussion here, plus the, uh, 
So I like the idea of a sliding scale. But, but an escrow account is, is just that. It sits in escrow. If it's used, it's, it's used. If it's not, it goes back. It's still it collects interest money in the that somebody in early on would not, you know, would not have. You know, they and and really the 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 point of it is that it would be good to review their draft license agreement and maybe even get town council's opinion on it and other people's, you know, planners, uh, you know, the people who do traffic studies, all that sort of thing. Um, it could be useful to do that before we enter into a host community agreement with them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and and there are there are two other board permitting bodies in town, and really this is a this is a kind of permit we're talking about. The planning board and the conservation commission both make applicants pay for their permit review. So that's essentially what this is for now. The five thousand dollars is a is a lot of money for somebody who's not yet in business to, <laughs> to right. fork over. Um, Andrea voiced, as as you can see in the points, that uh, the uh, if they if they don't have that, then they're undercapitalized. Um, that may or may not be true, depending on the particular operation. Um, but again, I'm trying to think of ways that we might slice it. And one of them would be by the kind of operation. Um, we might want to spend a lot more time analyzing the potential traffic of a retail operation <coughs> and a cultivation operation for which there's not going to be any retail traffic. So, so like the, the one thing that, that I would like to see us do, though, is to, do, to think about the policy that's best for the town sort of in the abstract without regard to any possible applicant that we know about. Even though, yes. e e even though the people that have been before us are really nice people, and I, you know, I'd like to help them out. At the same time, what's it's if if, if it doesn't work out with them, there's others in the pipeline I that that I've spoken to that um, you know will step up. So I, I I don't think it's necessary to sort of really focus on. All right. Do we do we agree in principle on an escrow? Forget the amount. Do we agree in principle on an escrow on the Sometimes. concept? Of some kind. Yeah, I do. I guess so, as long as it's not, you know, terribly onerous. But, uh, y you know, you don't want it to right. be a barrier. Uh, no, no, not at yeah. all. Yeah, okay. Not at all. all right, we, can, we, can, we can decide on the actual amount, but we're, we're all in, in agreement that escrow is, is, is a good thing in principle to basically make sure that we're covered in terms of some of the costs that we're going to have to just look it over initially. How is the cost arrived at if somebody goes to the planning board and they and they want to have their plan reviewed? You, you said and then they have to pay for it. There, there are set permit fees. Um, I know in the Conservation Commission there's set fees that, that the state charges. Yeah, and and, uh, and we, we know how much it costs to do a, a wetlands delineation. So if we have to do that, um, we know how much that is, and, and that's what they get charged. Because people come to our Conservation Commission meetings with a check, you know, it's, they pay for it, right? Uh, that, that, right there. That, that, that's the permit. They would, they would also pay for um, any professional or technical work that had to be done to move their project forward. Right. Right. Uh, that's not exactly what we have here. So we can't do that here because we don't know? Right. The amount. Right. And so this is something that, that Buckland thought was a reasonable figure for any possible operation. That said, there were uh, the way I understand it, there was some there was some heat involved um, uh, in their process that uh, spurred them to make this policy. So this was also a way to keep people from floating ideas and wasting people's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. So we're going to run this by Jack. Yeah, and then okay. the, the the second issue that, that had been mentioned was submitting the draft license application, and the point about that is it could be perfectly blank, and that would tell us something about their state of preparation, and we might have different questions for them. 
And if they did put things down, it might raise points that we hadn't thought of. So I still think it's a, it's a good idea to get their draft yeah. license application. It's also important because it tells you about who the real actual owners of the operation are and who the real actual investors are. And it's really important to know where the sources of money are coming from. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Otherwise, we don't have that. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda, consider raising a credit limit on highway department account. Ron, do you have something for us on that? I think it was discussed last week. Yeah, I think. Oh, okay. we did. We got it. Yeah, we um, we we talked about it before. There were some there were some comments made, so we've revised the draft policy, and you should have uh, a comment. Uh, you should have something on that. Um, but it's just what was uh, was what was requested by the board. Uh, with some <coughs> slight reward. Yeah, I think you do. I think uh, you do have that. Now, there's a version to be signed that uh, Jan has if you if you agree to this wording. But uh, so go ahead and, and uh, explain the situation. Well, I ran into a little situation because I've been trying to buy parts and stuff online because you save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And now that most companies are offering free shipping and stuff like that, it really does make a difference. And you can almost have your parts in two or three days in most cases. But using the credit card last month, I did make a mistake and forgot I had a purchase and I did go over the $2,000 limit. And so that cost $25 for an overage charge and I don't really want that to happen again and I don't have access to the account so I can't see where where I am on expenditures I mean that it was definitely my fault for not paying attention close enough but it got away from me I mean it was only a hundred dollars over the limit so my point is if we increase that limit it gives me a little more flexibility in buying parts and not having to worry. It's not that I use the credit card a lot, just that this month I did, or last month I did, and um, just looking for a little more of a safety net there. Okay, and cer certainly anything over that 2000 has to be approved by our town administrator. That's fine. Yeah. So essentially, you know, we're, we're, we're covered in terms of, of, uh, of uh, redundancy. All right. Does anybody have any more questions? That was what we arrived at yeah. last week. Yeah. yeah. So and here it is. So, so we're, Tom we're, was going to rewrite it. And it's rewritten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're all in <laughs> yeah. we're we're ready, ready to go. go. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Everybody's read this thoroughly. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we uh, increase the credit card limit uh, for the highway superintendent uh, to five thousand dollars. Uh, with anything over $2,000 to be approved, uh, secondly, by the town administrator. Uh, and for all other department heads, the $2,000 will, will remain the, the limit. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. And how many copies do you need? Um, what I, I, actually, all I really need is um, this one. Oh, no, it's not that one. It is... Uh, well, yeah, one of those would be good, and then uh, uh, here. This is, this is um, yeah, yeah. So, so that's where you sign. Um, that that's her sheet for her financial policies book. Right. So this is the one seven yeah. credit credit thing for that, um, and then one copy of the uh, of the one that you have as well. All right, Ron, that should give you what you need. Yes. And then he's, he's sticking around for his, his Just budget. To save a lot of money uh, online. Oh, yeah, and the next item, too, is his. Tom. Thank you. Uh, here, you want to put it in here? Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. I think those are the only ones. Okay. 
Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, Chapter 90, Reimbursement for Matthews Road, Main Poland Road, North Poland Road, and a request for Hoosack Road. Okay. Well, the Hoosack Road, I haven't had time to put together, so. Okay, so we'll table that? Table that part of it. Okay. Uh, how, how are the residents on Hoosack Road responding to the milling of the road? Um, a lot of them are very happy that it happened, and there's a few that we've had not really complaints, but just a dissatisfied okay. thing, but okay. there's really been no issues. Um, I'm actually working on the tree removal part now, and that's um, going to be a challenge. Okay. Yeah, that would be the most controversial. Right. I believe that uh, his plan is to talk with all the landowners whose trees the land are on first, and then talk with the residents in general, um, noting what the landowners have, uh, noting what the conversations with the landowners sit there. I, I know. I know. I read one email from a landowner that was concerned about the uh, the cutting of uh, the trees and the, the canopy, uh, whatever. Um, have you spoken to them? Um, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Okay, I, I'm not going to mention it. I, I yeah. think Tom knows. You can talk to Tom. Yeah, okay. okay. Is, is it necessary to cut so many trees, though? Mm -hmm. Well, the whole point is to improve the road safety by making it wide enough so that cars can meet as they come together. And that road's always been a huge issue with being mm -hmm. narrow in a lot of spots, blind yeah, spots. It's a shortcut. There are like about six spots along the road where right, you got to be careful right. about oncoming mm -hmm. traffic. Yeah. I just thought that was a bump. That was the good part about that road. That was the well, best you, part about that road. Well, when traffic. you have that many residents that live on the road, and then you add people using it as a shortcut. Yeah. I personally can't. When we're updating something, we got to make some kind of improvements to the road. I mean, we're, we're spending a lot of money here, so we have to make some kind of improvements to make it safer. And I know people, everybody says speed because when you widen the road, but it actually, if people already speed on the road. So giving them the chance to be able to meet each other helps that situation considerable. And I've had good re responses from what we did on Matthews Road by widening in a few spots down there and um, it's been residents have been very happy at what we did down there i know there's a few that probably haven't been too but eversource has been cutting a lot of trees down correct uh and did, have they cut trees down on Hoosick road or are you Actually, ahead of that's them? on a different circuit so they haven't done any graves reach uh, it would graves. be great to know what trees they would want to cut down and well, uh, I can't tell them to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I'm happy with what they've been doing in the other part of it, yeah. the rest of the town. Because yeah. they've been taking a lot of trees. That were yeah. They're going to be working on 116 and Main Poland Road, and they will cut 10 feet from the wire and do it um, more or less, depending. They'll also talk with the landowners uh, when they do that. So they'll they'll they have different ways that they can trim and they will do more or less of a job and leave the wood or not leave the wood depending on what the landowner wants. Right, they've been really good. I, I mean, if you if you cut down all the trees that Eversource is liable to want to take, uh, or, you know, the ones that you want to cut down that also are in their group, I, it might... The problem is timing. Because I can't go tell Eversource to go work on that. No, but you can probably tell which ones. I mean, they're cutting all the trees that are hanging over the wires. Uh, mostly. Yeah, not, not necessarily those that we need to cut to our right. road. Yeah. 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 So that's the one you're not ready for. What about the ones you are ready for? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, these ones are for the, the work's already been done. I okay. You need signatures? Signatures so that we can get our money back. Okay. The first one is for Matthews Road. And uh, that's for $107,782.50. Um, the, the end of the Matthews Road saga? 
Yes. Well, we still have a little bit of work left to do down there, but we have to wait till the weather gets better. So do we vote on each of these separately, or? Yeah, we'll vote on them separately. Okay. You can make a motion for for this. Or for this? Well, let me see. Oh, don't sign it yet. You didn't vote on it yet. <laughs> Okay, we have a request from um, our highway superintendent to uh, uh, request reimbursement for uh, Chapter 90 funds for Matthews Road in the amount of $107,782.50. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, sign the request. Do I have a second? Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. What do you have next, Ron? Next one for Main Pauling Road, where we did a reclamation in two and a half inch dense binder hot mix on two spots on that road. And now that road is has all new pavement in the last two years. Um, and that amount is uh, two hundred and three thousand three hundred and fifty nine dollars and seventy five cents. Is that, a long, is that a longer stretch? Yes. That was, um, Sorry. That's a, is the difference in uh, in cost just the length of the yes. stretch? Yes. Matthews Road was um, 4,860 feet. And that one, Main Poland Road, is 8,100 feet that we did. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we... Um, we sign the request to reimburse Chapter 90 funds for uh, Main Poland Road uh, in the amount of $203,359.75. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's an expensive road. Yeah, the bridge on top of that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Wow. Yeah. We had a um, construction well, truck we, start. The news on the bridge is I talked to the bridge inspector or the bridge, District 1 bridge manager, and it is on for 2023. Um, 2023. 20, 23. 20, to yeah. be replaced. To be replaced. Nice. nice. For, for the money. There is money there for the new car. That didn't go far at all. It'll make it. The bridge will. Survive till then. We'll make sure it does. Okay. Yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> I'll spring for a canoe on either side. Yeah. <laughs> Third one is here is for North Poland Road, which we did the same thing, reclamation in the two and a half inch hot mix. Um, it's for $153,769.47. And that road also has all new pavement in the last two years now. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion that we um, sign the request for reimbursement of Chapter 90 funds for uh, North Poland Road for a total of $153,769.47. Do I have a second? Second. Or one fifth. Yes. Just note that uh, our highway supervisor also has to sign these things, and where there's a certification line for you to sign. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did I miss one? Did I miss one? Yeah. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. Thanks for pointing sure, out. Sure, sure. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ron. Ron, well, are you sure uh, Jan knows that this money should be coming? Thank you, Ron. Okay, you. next item on our agenda. Bob Dean is here. Come on up, Bob. 
Good evening. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Take the hot seat. So this is to uh, consider the community compact best practice grant application to support ERCOG accounting function. Okay. That is it. Take it away. Appreciate you giving me the time to come in and talk to you about this this evening. Okay. Um, as you know, we provide you with accounting services uh, as well as 11 other towns. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a, a, an opening for a part-time accountant uh, for a couple of months now and have had a difficult time filling a part-time position. Um, I have a person who would be very good, I think, in you know, the job who's looking for a full-time position, um, but how do I get there if I don't have money in the budget for that? Uh, and this is an issue that we've dealt with a lot uh, over the past few years, uh, trying to find trained, or at least trainable, uh, accountants. Uh, so we've talked to the state about the idea of um, creating a training program and, mm -hmm. and asking for their uh, monetary assistance to do that um, and also for help in uh, getting us to the point where we can hire this full-time person and supporting that for at least a couple of years um, so that it doesn't impact the towns in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Cronin at the Division of Local Services is um, interested in this. Um, this is, is part of a report from the Lieutenant Governor's uh, Task Force um, mm -hmm. about the skills gap in, in local government positions. Uh, so we came to them with the this idea for, a, for the training program. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially we would take on process of training someone who was very interested in becoming a municipal accountant but didn't have the experience to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Sean suggested that you know one of the, the best ways to get to this uh, result quickly would be um, to ask for your support and other towns in the program um, for community compact support. Um, so I've approached the towns that have are eligible to apply for community compact mm -hmm. uh, best practices. Uh, you can apply for up to two currently um, for a regional pro project that would essentially be to ask the state for this type of funding support. We're, we're hoping for full support, but you know, we'll okay. so what you need from us is a letter of support. Um, actually, there's an online application or. I'm not sure how much of an application there is at this point, but uh, it would require you know, the town to go online and just say we're interested in this municipal you know, accounting program regional project. And then Sean said that you know, he would take it from there once you know, he had at least a couple of towns that were interested and, um, and we'd start working on the details of that. Are you aware the, the MMA is... is um Investigating a program to train financial. I did see uh, that. Financial management and accounting people. Yeah. Because um, there's a shortage all over the Commonwealth there in, is. in uh, the financial end, uh, especially mm -hmm. town accountants. You can't you can't find them. Accountants, uh, uh, finance so directors, yeah, um, tax collectors, treasurers. Yeah. The whole the whole gamut is a problem all across the state. Yeah. Do you, so, have, uh, do, do you know how the registration is going for the Northampton uh, short course this spring? I do not know. Mm. There, uh, there is one being offered. Uh, I think it's a six-day introduction to municipal accounting for uh, people who want to make the transition from CPA or, or private accounting to municipal mm -hmm. Who is offering that? DOR. You are? Yeah. I think it's with Suffolk. Okay. So would we later target one of our community compact projects to this program? Or That's what I'm asking you to do. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it towards our like, regional. It sounds program. like more than the level of support. Yeah, we, you know, okay. But. So can, can I ask what does success look like? And it just with the caveat being that I think. Currently, would we pay north of twenty thousand dollars for someone for eight hours a week, which I, I think is high, and uh, I, I don't know. I, I think the history of the accountant 
services that we're getting have left something to be desired, but uh, you, somebody else could speak more no, than that. I think, I think the PERCON does an excellent job for us. We've, we've had some challenges. Services. Over, Over the, the last, last couple years. of years, there have definitely been challenges. Before that, we had a, a good run with, uh, with Joyce for, uh, mm -hmm. for several years, where she helped us clean up our books to, a, to an extraordinary degree. The last couple of years with the transition when, when she retired and uh, they there and the new software you have have been quite challenging. Yeah, so that's, that's a matter that's so, a matter of having not enough staff and a matter of, of changing software, which was uh, a challenge. It's a regional program, so there's twelve towns that participate. Um, and the way it works is that and the way that all the municipal service programs work at the FERCOG is that I have to put together a budget that brings in all of the costs of the program. So, you know, all of the indirect as well as direct so, you know, salary costs. So, and then that gets allocated across all of the, uh, the towns that are in the program based on the number of hours at, on average that they're using. So, that's how the, the funding works for the program. And it's a, you know, it's a partnership between the 12 towns and the COG to provide the service. Because um, I remember when we, like right after we approved it, I remember seeing the Help Wanted ad and what you were paying, and there was a huge gulf between what you were paying and what we were paying, it just seemed to me. It just, when I'm paying a, a, an accountant versus, yeah. yes. Yeah, so yeah. And versus yeah. what it's we not were a, paying it's not a service. service. It's not a strict hour to hour comparison because of all those other costs. Now does, does Conway have an enterprise fund? No. No, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like a it's like its own business, standalone business. So all of the costs have to come into it. So you know, I'm paying um, you know for uh, mileage, I'm paying for um, you know communications, IT support, um, software, uh, administrative support, all that stuff. Healthcare. Has to, hmm? Healthcare. Healthcare. Yeah, all of the, the you know the non-salary benefits. That's all in that cost. So. There's no way. There's no way to make a, a strict hourly rate for an accountant to, you know, you know, dividing what you're paying by eight hours essentially. So for us, what would success look like? Would that be the same, more of the same, twenty something thousand for eight hours, or would it be less for us, or more for us, or how, what would success look like? Well, I'm, I'm hoping it's success is that we're ironing out the, the difficulties that we've been having currently, so that it's a, a much smoother process. Uh, we've had issues with the MIP software um, that are being addressed slowly, but I think we're getting there. Um, so it's an overall program success, essentially, that we're talking about here. Um, if I'm able to replace uh, an account that leaves the program, and you know, Mike Coachella is your accountant. He's a he's retired. He wants to do this in retirement. For how long, I don't know. But you know, the reality is that when people leave, I've got to replace them. So you know, if I've got somebody who is uh, being trained as a municipal accountant waiting in the wings, then that's going to be success for the program. Right now, you know, if Mike were to leave, I, I, you know, I, I have had an, another gentleman who was retired working in two towns. That's the position I have open right now. And, I've got to try to find replacement you know, work for two towns. So, um, but it's very difficult to find somebody who can step into a position that's a trained municipal accountant. You know, a lot of towns all over the state, as John mentioned, are finding it difficult to find that replacement for that, for that position. So we're talking about you know, increasing capacity so that we've got somebody who can step in um, you know, if the, the training program idea itself uh, could be used for other towns, if you know, if we don't need that person that we're training, they can move on and, and go somewhere else, and we hire somebody new to be trained. You know, it's it's that kind of concept that you know the state and the towns you know have not been able to or have not chosen to invest in training to bring on. You know, there, there's no bench depth, so to speak. Um, in many of the financial positions, the accountants being the one that I'm dealing with right now. 
So, so I don't hear you saying sec success is going to lower the price for us. Is success it? is not going to lower the price. Yeah, all right. Um, and and that's a reality of you know costs going up and what it what it's so. going to do is keep us serviced by by a competent account. That's what it's going to do. That's that's the goal of the program, and certainly it's it's about serving the towns that that we work with. There's no um, there's no money being made. Will there be an advantage this? if you get to hire a full time person and have them do the five towns or however? That would be a big advantage right now. Um, it would create some slack in terms of extra staff. Capacity. And it sounds like you're, right now you're dealing with a lot of part time. There's a people. It's, I've got a couple of full time. I've got several part time. You know, it's a it's a function of you know what I've got available in the budget at any given moment when I need to replace mm. somebody. Do we have any other competitors for the title of community compact uh, uh, champion? Uh, we're not considering any other best practices at this time. We are considering maybe uh, a, a different program within the community compact. So to say yes to this, that doesn't deprive any other doesn't potential project of... Yeah. No, we would be able to sign up for two or three, or yeah. for one or two more if we wanted to anyway. Yeah, it doesn't crowd out anything else. All right. You can, you're eligible for up to two right now. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Okay. All right, so, so and, and if, if, if you were going to vote for it, a vote to authorize me to submit the application would yeah. probably be in order as well. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? That's enough. Okay. Yeah, this is a, this is a, 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 a sorely, sorely needed function, uh, particularly in Western Massachusetts and particularly in Franklin again. So it's something that, that I think we should support wholeheartedly. Well, so, well these people also then could they work in schools and schools are... Not same accounting, or is that a, a um, different branch? I, different animal altogether. Uh, I mean, business manager. You no know better than I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, and so it's the same thing that we, as soon as you get them good and trained up, they get poached. Right. And because they do a musical chairs thing every spring, and they get poached by another town. And Palmer, we'll get you back someday. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, uh, we allow Tom to fill out the application for supporting the regional accounting training uh, that uh, FERCOG wants to accomplish. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Go Thank ahead. you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd be happy to meet with you at some point to talk more about FERCOG <coughs> and services, whatever you want. Sure. Cool, Bob. He's in charge of that. I'm the director of regional services. I'm Phil Camper. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, next item Consider Town Scholarship for Festival of the Hills Donations. Tom, what's that about? This is a request uh, I got from Phil, um, who uh, found a way in the Mass General Laws where the town can have a town scholarship based on donations uh, with a, a scholarship committee comprised of the superintendent and at least four members of the public. Um, do you, did you get the, uh, there's a excerpt from the law. It, the, the law the law is very, uh, yes, that would be one. It, it's very, um, confusing the way it appears when you just look it up in the general laws because there was this, it was amended as of a certain date. So I, I tried to provide two different versions, one of which was as it appears on the web and then um, I, I think the way that it is actually, um, uh, that, that it actually reads now that we're past 2014 or 2016 or, or, or whenever that was. So that, that says how it would be done. Um, as you know, the, the Festival of the Hills um, split off from the town uh, some years ago. Um, they had... Um, Did, we're talking about Festival of the Hills funds? So, we're, 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 so, so this is... 
This is a way for the Festival of the Hills to be town affiliated without it costing the town a penny. They're not. So, they're no longer town affiliated. Right. They're they're separate. Correct. Yeah. So this would be a way for them to be town because they could no longer remain town affiliated in in a law in the manner that they were because it was not lawful. That's why they were separated. This is a lawful way for them to be town affiliated, um, and they would that. There would no, they well, would still be the Festival of the Hills. They, they used to be affiliated with the town because they were a town committee. But Correct. then they went and they, they separated from the town by forming their own 501c3. Because so they're, they're separate from us. Because they were the, to do that. Because the Department of Revenue. Sharon Gorman and the town treasurer. Mm -hmm. Because the, so, so, the Department so, of Revenue uh, stated that you could not award the, the, in the, the way that as a town committee, it is not lawful for the town to award scholarships in that fashion. So this, since the reason for being of the Festival of the Hills is to award scholarships, this is the lawful way for a town-affiliated organization to award scholarships. And it would not cost the town a penny. It would just be a reorganizing of it. And, and it would also actually, it would allow them to put it in, in our tax bills, they could put in a, a, a thing in the tax bill saying donate to the Festival of the Hills in the tax bill. Um, but so, so the, yeah, but one, the one, festival one. would raise money and donate it to a town scholarship fund, and then the committee that was appointed by the select board would disperse it. That's it. Why, why would, they're a separate organization, why are they gonna donate money to the town and put it in our hands when they have a committee that, that does scholarships? Because it is, uh, it's such a central thing to the town identity. It's it should it's part of the town. It's the the the, the idea that um, that it, it that they're separate and off on and on their own and have nothing to do with the town. I I I don't agree with, and I think that. Well, for it's, years that's what they did anyways. I right. Mean, they had to beg the town before to spend a couple bucks on buying paint for the porta potties. No, but the first bunch of years on a revival, late eighties into the nineties, there was no. Well, when when they were a town committee, I used to be on the scholarship committee to to decide on scholarships. And then when they went separate, they're they're doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah, because it because of the, they were told that they yeah. couldn't, the way it was set up, they couldn't be part of. It wasn't thing. voluntary. Now I don't know if doing something like that, how does that enhance any kind of BS about uh, insurance? You know, like, uh, what's the insurance at the festival? If <coughs> this, has, this has nothing to do with the festival as the festival. They are, the festival of the hills would remain a private entity. This is only about a scholarship fund where the, the festival would donate money to the town so what is the for a town scholarship the fund. What's, what's the incentive for them to do, do that? that? What's the incentive for them to I do no that? Idea. They're separate from the town now. That's what I was wondering. What's the, and and what they have their own scholarship to? committee. Is and they, they award scholarships. So why would they give us money for us? Are they covered? Are they covered insurance? Sure, they, yeah, but this is not about insurance. This is about scholarships. Well, I'm just they saying have the town affiliation has all kinds of ramifications. No, they're not affiliated with the town. So is there insurance? Do you know, does the festival carry some rider on the insurance company? All right, this is not they about their insurance. insurance. Huh? This is, this is, we're talking right now about scholarships they have their own scholarship committee. i'm talking about impetus what would be the impetus for doing something like that what there's no impetus for them to do this because they have their own scholarship if, committee. If paying, if, if that kind of thing so what? so this is a way of getting the discussion started as to see what you know be, we, we 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 had stated before that it's our policy that we want to help them out in whatever way we can if this is seen as something helpful then i'd like to do it if it's not seen as something helpful, I don't want to force anybody to do it. But for my discussions, I believe that they, it, it would be well received and it, it would be uh, a mark of respect that they would once again be taken under the uh, affiliation of the town. I think it, so. So it, it, this would not be a being affiliated with the town uh, in any necessary sense. Whoever got appointed to the scholarship committee would be who got appointed to the scholarship committee. Right. I think I think they might be 
they might be hoping that members of the festival of the Hills group might be appointed to the scholarship committee. Right. Um, that's not necessarily what would happen. Um, even if this select board did it, the future select board might might not. So um, I, I also just wanted to bring up that point. But so, so what we're talking about would not make them a town committee again. No, 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 no. They were just receiving donations from them. That, that's all this would do. Um, we would what, also what, what have What do they to want to do? Well, you know, if, I mean, it feels like we, we should be talking to them, not passing something on our own. That was my original request, but I'm just happy to talk about it with you all as well. So. Okay. But, um, all right, well, I, I, there has to be some discussion about this with them. Yeah. As far as I know, I don't, I don't know that they want to be, to give up their scholarship money so that we can appoint a committee to give it out. They've got their own committee. I, I don't know why they'd want to do that. Right, like I said, unless, unless there was something, with that affiliation, there was something that was better for them. And that's what I was saying about well, well, what I, what would, I just wonder like, I don't if know. there was a way to make them a town committee again and go back to the way we were and have it this be... Is, this is the closest we can get to it lawfully. And, and, and have it be legal. Right. This is it. This is the I mean, closest they're a separate 501c3 nonprofit. They have their own corporate laws and all that, right? They do. And we subsidize because we don't charge them the facility fee to use the grounds or anything. And they may want to stay that way. I would think. Right. As far as I know, they do want to stay that way. Good. I, I understand something different than that, so that's, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But because what happens is if we have put the people on payroll who, who are going to be hired for that day, do we have to pay payroll taxes? I guess that that's being pretty unwieldy. I'm sure they have separate event insurance just for single, single purpose. Then, then let's keep it that way. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. All right, you want to you want to reach out to them? Uh, yeah, you, Phil, if you can have sure. somebody send a proposal. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Good. Next item, uh, FERCOG direct local technical assistance priorities. Okay, we have a, um, a handout, a survey, uh, and what I think we should do, as we've done in past years, is just um, go over this before, let's see, this has to be in by the 25th. Yeah, and I, and I did get, um, I have received the planning board's priorities as well. Okay. Um, so the, the select board can have its own priorities and then consider the priorities of the other people who, uh, you know, there, there are planning things in here, there's an open space thing, there's a conservation thing. Uh, I did get a note back saying I think the conservation commission, I'm, I'm not sure, so someone did not feel like they wanted to uh, submit anything, but the planning board has submitted um, uh, something for the housing needs assessment, the uh, um, watershed advisory uh, council, and uh, they, they want some help on a uh, zoning bylaw as well, uh, just to let you know. And I have some suggestions on what I'd like to. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, th I think continuing the, uh, the, the workshops for elected officials at the COG is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have a proposal for an abandoned properties task force um, that I think is good. And then there's some, some uh, potential new shared services, including uh, human resource management and um, a town risk manager or OSHA compliance person due to the new law. Um, that would be good. And then they also talk about the Citizens Academy, succession planning, um, and uh, planning for for town volunteer positions as well as uh, paid positions. So uh, those are the ones that, that came to my mind. But okay. uh, please, yeah, do fill out your own and then we can um, put everything together uh, before the deadline, I hope. So, yeah, you, so, so you want so us to rank like the top five and one, two, three, four, five and, yeah. and give them back to you? Yes. And we'll, we, same thing we did last year? Yeah. Okay, and so we'll just, you know, uh, reconcile our answers with everybody else and we'll send something into uh, the first copy. Great. So everybody has a copy of this? Yeah. Okay. So the different <coughs> rankings for planning projects and different versus regional projects? Yeah. Versus mm -hmm. community compact projects. There's, there's two uh, sections, yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's instructions in the um, I guess there are three areas. Yeah. 
there's blood. All right, so let's uh, let's put that together before next week. Okay, next item on the agenda is our joint meeting with the uh, finance committee. I'm sorry, we're a little uh, over uh, by 25 minutes. Um, is that for God guys? Well, it looks like you're a little down in numbers anyway. That's right. Hedger won't be here through for the next month and a half. To that time. So our our first item is to review the highway department. Budget. Welcome back. Cheers. Okay, Ron. Okay, where are our, our big differences from uh, All right. this past year? Uh, I'd like to add two thousand dollars to my overtime pay. We've been close this year. Right now, we're at already at our used up our two thousand, or within a few dollars of it, um, and we still have half a year to go. Um, and why do you why do you think that was special projects? You know, a lot of projects that we're doing requires overtime for doing traffic details and. Okay. And then also the weather has caused us to have overtime too for fixing because of the rain's been so bad this year. So we've been running close to it anyways. And since we took the payroll out of, made it a separate item, it doesn't give me any room to take money out of a, from one account, one of my other accounts to move it into payroll. Mm -hmm. So just trying to give myself a little bit of a buffer there. Okay. Um, and then let's see. Well, rentals. I've added the ten thousand dollars for the boom lift that we voted last year as an article for renting the boom lift for ten thousand dollars instead of buying one. Okay. Have you rented it much? We're using it right now. We've yeah. had it for almost a month now. Um, it's going well. Um, it does. It's renting in our business doesn't work really good because we never know what's going on. So the machine does sit some, um, but it is. We're using it as much as we can, and uh, it's actually working out pretty good. Okay. Guys, is, guys are very happy. is there things that you can do to make that more efficient and get more, you know, so that you structure it so that when you're you're using it in bunches, so that you can call them and have them take it back and not have it sit. Well, the problem is that you have to rent it in time lots, like uh, by the day, by the week, or by the month, and each one has the more the longer you rent it for, the more money you save. So, like a month. It's like three weeks. But if you keep bringing it back in when you're not using it, they're not going to credit you for your term. You know, they're going to say you took it for three days and then brought it back. They're going to charge you for three days. So the daily rate is... Nice. They usually figure three days makes a week and three weeks make a month. So if you start doing it by the day, then it's going to eat up that money very fast. Plus then you've got all the transportation, the time of moving it back and forth. And I mean, it's just from Greenfield, so it's not a big deal there, but it's still a couple hours each way. But you know, if you're figuring your time for that, so. Um, and how are you using it? Did you use it for the Christmas tree, for example? No, we didn't. We didn't have it at the time. Oh, I see. Um, I just, the lights went all the way to the top. This year, we so actually had great. somebody, I believe, donated the bucket uh -huh. oh, from a great. tree company to do that. Yeah. Um, Came out looking really good this year. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, we're doing um, tree trimming. We did some on South Shirkshire so far, and we've been over on uh, Maple St uh, Pleasant Street. Now, just to keep it close so that the way the weather's been lately, you never know one day to the next whether you're going to be, what you're going to be doing, so. 
Because when I went to my training, this, uh, the training they used the lift, the, the example of a lift for a highway department as the precise example of something a town should not buy and should always be leasing. Um, and uh, for reasons of, I, I forget why, but then this is it, um, insurance and the, 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 the usage, the time, life expectancy, that, that, that. Um, yeah. Oh, I disagree with it. But <laughs> just because of we never know from day to day, especially at this time of year, where you know what the weather is going to be, you know whether you're going to be able to use it or not. Um, and the one you were proposing was a used, correct? One anyway. Would you have been able to repair that in house? Mostly. Um, I had checked into. There is certifications that need to be done on it, yearly certifications and. Every 10 years, a major certification. Um, basically, that I was talking to somebody and he said, well, when you buy a used one, make sure you're, it's already had uh, 10 years certificate. You know, when you're within a few years of it. Um, he gave me some pointers as to how you would buy a used one that, you know, would protect you in a lot, you know, as far as cost. The yearly one is basically just a, gen, it's like a, state inspection for your car. You, you just go over it, have to have everything gone over. Um, it's not a huge expense, but it's there every year. But it's also for the safety of the people running it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. The other thing is my sublet, I wanted to, I raised that $5,000. That's for like our tree guides that we use. Or, um, uh, when we hire somebody to do, uh, can't think of anything else. Tree Guys is one of them. Uh, we did uh, paving a few years ago that would be considered sublet. Um, anything where you hire somebody to come in and do, you know, a service for us. Mm -hmm. um, office added a thousand to that. Just everything's going up so I needed a little bit more there. Mm -hmm. Repairs, $10,000 added to that and between tires and the cost of anything made out of metal now is everything. The prices have been going up a lot so tires are almost double what they were two years ago. So. Fuel's down, fuel's down. Uh, kept it the same. Yeah, but yeah, the real world is down. Yeah, well, right now we're paying. I'm paying a dollar more than I was a year ago. What? Because we bid. We have to bid. Yeah. Hopefully, we're hoping this year that will go back down, but we won't know until sometime after the. Well, any time now, I guess. It means Oil prices have been volatile. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this is in 2018. You spent 98,000, and now you're only. Was there some? Was that, that, was that, that greater? The greater, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. yeah. But yeah. The greater and yeah. How are we with the budget this year so far on with the uh, repairs? We're actually over 50,000 right now. Um, we had not. We had some issues with a couple of the trucks that um, ate up some pretty good money. We had a clutch that we had to replace. We had a hydraulic cylinder, um, fuel tanks, we had two trucks that needed fuel tanks, um, just une unexpected stuff that um, we try to deal with, but mm -hmm. it's there. I was having my car fixed down in Session the other day and, and they had a Buckland truck in there they were working on and they complimented you on how rarely Conway has to have been working on one of our vehicles. Uh, yeah. oh. Nice to hear that. So overall, my budget, I'm looking to increase it by 30, a little less than $30,000. What's that as, an, as a percentage, math whiz? Anybody? 10%, less than 10%. <laughs> Uh, Last year, our total budget was 6.7 million. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. 6.7 million is a total budget. Last year, I mean. No, I'm just looking at the, the highway. The percentage of increase from 
last year to this year's request? A little less than 12%. 12%? Yeah. 12%? No. No, a little less than 4%. Oh, 4%. Well, I, I, I'm yeah. trying. trying. Yeah. That's why I repeat it, because I didn't know. No, that's why I said so, because I, yeah. I heard you're 12. All right. I knew it wasn't 12. Good. 4%. And then on my winter budget, the only thing I'm looking to do is add a couple more thousand dollars to my equipment, which is cutting, cutting edges and anything that pertains to the trucks or anything like sanders and stuff like that that um, repairs to them. My questions for Ron? That's, that's for the regular. So it's three rooms. I don't see a tool. Well, my, my question I have for you, Ron, would be the uh, repair seems to be too low. So what? The repairs seem awfully low. If you look, for the last three fiscal years, we've been consistently under budgeting. I mean, uh, 18. Uh, yeah. So, why don't we want to look at that, I man? 60 oh, grand. Seven. You're anticipating tires. Is there anything more concrete? Are there any other scheduled maintenances, or that might be of a uh, or replacements that might be of a significant dollar amount? Well, actually, we're. I have capital requests to replace one truck this year. Capital so requests are what five thousand or more. How do we how do we have it? We, we don't we don't have a policy on town yet for for capital, what we consider to be a long term capital versus operating budget. And we're talking about five thousand, right? Yeah. Individual items. So I don't know if you want to put that in the capital budget or this and just that's all. Put yeah. what into the capital? And if I repair and the for a piece of equipment which is scheduled or a replacement which is more than five thousand, do you want to put that in the operating budget or the capital budget? I don't know. Well, you can't we, do repairs and repairs are always going to be an operating. So No, but Alan, your point is good. I mean you're yeah. saying every year the repairs the expended is way higher than the yeah. budgeted. And and you're saying you're at fifty thousand already for this year. Over fifty thousand. Yes. So how much is it? How much over you know, any idea? Yeah, I'm guessing maybe... I can ask Mike Ochoa to give us a little date. Yeah. Uh, it's, I know we're only halfway through the year, and I know, yeah. but it's we've had some... Heavier time of year, too, for equipment in terms of usage and wear and tear. Right. Yeah. Um, some of it was regular maintenance stuff sure. that turned into more stuff than... All the equipment is always the unknown. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's been the trucks. Um, yeah. Although I have been? had issues with my equipment too. I mean, I'm, so we're gonna. I'm fighting with. Uh, right now, we had to put brakes in one of the loaders, mm -hmm. which nobody seems to know why it did what it did yeah. for yeah. having 1,700 hours on it. I mean, they're right now offering to pay a little more than half of the bill, but it's still. Four thousand dollar bill, you know. Um, it's just things that happen that you know. Once you're out of the warranty period, fighting with them, trying to you know make it like it shouldn't have happened. Um, Can you uh, just put together a list of the repairs for for last year and this year, just so you can? Uh, what do you want for a list? Just. What cost, you know, 98000 is just like... Well, the I'm wondering, right? you know... The transfer out for... Uh, yeah, the all the greater, yeah. Well, there was other things that went on there. Um, yeah, I can I can give you a list of everything that we paid for. Yeah, it would probably be good to keep an Excel sheet of the repairs year to year. I mean, you uh, talk about a 4% just, increase. Just if it's that much, you know. Maybe sixty thousand is is underestimating yeah. what you need. I mean, we got eleven thousand additional chapter seventy money from the state this year, right? For fiscal year nineteen. You mean chapter chapter, chapter 90? ninety money? Yeah, we got fifty three for chapter. chapter we we chapter did get 90. some extra chapter nine. So I mean, I, we can't count on it for fiscal year twenty, but I mean, you know, we have more money coming in. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but everything as far as we wrote and beers cost way more too. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, just this little, you, the, we just asked for reimbursement for the money that just got spent on three road projects, and there's probably almost uh, eighteen thousand dollars in um, AC adjustment, you know, asphalt content adjustment that I had no idea. I, nobody knows what it is. 
because it's every month depending on when you do the work so I mean we just got what fifty thousand fifty six thousand dollars in chapter 90 money the what the governor you know gave us extra well half of that's already gone just in what we just spent and you know in something that I wasn't even planning on but did those those three road projects that uh, the select board just approved before you got in total four hundred and sixty five thousand dollars we get about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year from uh, to from get down closer to two fifty now so maybe plus the fifty maybe that brings it up to a little over, over three hundred but we just spent four hundred and sixty five for three relatively small reclamation paving projects I understand that you know everything <laughs> the budget is a real dollar problem um, we're, we're doing our best to maximize the dollars that the highway department gets we do a lot most all the work ourselves <coughs> that we can yeah. and um, I'm not I'm not saying that things are not expensive and when break things break down a lot of times you don't have the option of you know spending some extra time to prepare them because you need the, the equipment but so this is just a pre-preliminary, this is a very preliminary budget for, the, for this, uh, this department. Right? This is the budget for this department. This is the hearing for the budget for this department. I definitely, I would definitely suggest, you know, tallying up year-to-date repairs. I think that figure needs to be looked at more closely. You mean as far as raising it? Yeah. Um, it's probably better to make it more reflect reality. This is why I wanted to, you know, the, yeah, the sort of list of repairs, like, you know, are they typical, how typical are they well, um, in, in a year? And, and it does look as though well, 50, the repair budget has been... In 17, we were $3,000 over. Um, 16, and that, that's some of what happened here is in 16, we had $60,000 on and we ended up spending 75, but at the time, when you do your budget, we're, we're only halfway into the year. And so sometimes it's deceiving to see how things are going. Um, obviously, I agree with what you're saying this year. But the other, on the other hand, is if some of my capital requests come through, then that makes a difference on that part of it directly. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And the warranty, it has to be repaired. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for Ron? So the, just a, a, a math check, the, the annual percentage increase from last year to this year is closer to 6% than 4%. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's, a, that's a steep annual increase. And I, you know, I hopefully, maybe this is a blip year and the next year looks better or whatever. Well, you got to look at the mm -hmm. fact that I added the $10,000 in it directly for the boom left. Right. Um, we could go to and put it as an article. I mean, but it's not going to change anything as far as you know what the end of, end, end result is. So the uh, the average repair bill from FY15 through FY18 was uh, almost eighty thousand dollars, seventy nine four eighty nine. Yeah, but you added last year's in. And all of them. I, I know, I know, but 15, last 16, year, 17, and 18. So the last four years. Right. I understand that. That's my, my point, though, was that we had the money, extra money added for the, for the greater last year. For repairs? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's included in that. Um, 98, 916. No, when my what I requested. Well, I'm just saying what you what you have yeah. spent in repairs, right. FY15 through FY18 has been almost eighty thousand dollars a year, so it kind of makes sense, you know, rather than always being behind, um, and you know, mm -hmm. risking going into the reserve fund. Well, um, one of the one of the things was also that over the years I've been asked to try to level fund my budget too. And, mm -hmm. There, there, there is one category in the winter temporary employment when you're asking for 
3074. And it looks like that amount has never been spent in the past. Is that is that necessary to ask for that amount? It's never been spent. Um, I can't. That's one of those categories you can't tell till the winter's through. I know I haven't, but I've been only in the last few years we've been using the temporary help more. Um, it's pretty small though. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's one of them. scratch for every little penny here, man. <laughs> but it's one of them budgets that we've kept the same. I mean, if you look at where we've been with that budget, and it's been the same for five years. Well, you don't go back far enough. I mean, it's been close. The only thing that changed has changed in it over the years has been the uh, pay increase for the overtime pay and stuff. That's gone up just because of the. Two percent going up percent. next year and the year after too. Well, the pay increase rate right across the labor they have expended in 015 and budgeted for 019. Right, it's like forty six thousand difference. If you get over pay increases, what's well, no, not no, just up top, up top on labor, the, the straight the top one. Oh yeah, right well, well that's bottom, because well we that's the raises. No, it's not just raises. It's an added employees. Oh, is it? it yeah, is. that's all. Another employee added, well, two employees, one part-time and one full. So how many are on the crew? Just four After plus you. Me. Four plus me and my assistant. And assistant. It's part-time. The assistant's part-time? Yeah, yeah. But that's, a, that's more book work. That's not machinery. Right, right. right. Yeah. But it's still in the budget. Yeah. That's right. Everyone's yeah. got an assistant now. Uh -huh. <laughs> the way <clears throat> yeah, the same cost the a big help to me if it was full time. But oh. sand costs are always coming under budget, but I'd say I keep well, it Well, sand is include that includes every other material that we use, um, like mud season, uh -huh. stone, um, oh, stone, coal right. patch, right. that kind of cutting edges. All that no, that comes out of supplies. Sorry, um, materials. Yeah. Salt is, I keep separate. Yeah. I don't know who set the categories up, but salt I've always kept separate, uh -huh. just so I have a real clear how much money I spend on that. Sure, and sure. Then sand is every other material that we use. Yes. Did we save any money this year putting Route 116 down in some of our roads? They chopped up Route 116. That exactly. ended up on your road. I know. <laughs> that, saved, that, that saved us money, right? Oh, a lot of money. It was, um, 600 yards. We even have, have highway uh, reflector markers now on the road. Yes, in places. The the road, <laughs> in large. <laughs> any place, any, I have a open invitation to anybody grinding a road to, if you're looking to get rid of it, call me, we'll come and get it. <laughs> good. That's, That's good. great. Yep. And actually we've had Northfield, we've hauled out of Northfield. Really? Yeah. They did want it. Well, they didn't have any. The problem a lot of times when you do a project is the amount <coughs> and having a place to put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's great. Good. Okay, any other questions for Ron? No, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Ron. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, other town meeting and budget business. Tom, do you have anything else? Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, um, Go over and I have the revised budget meeting schedule. So there's a couple of meetings I had to answer Mondays that are actually holidays. Um, Alan, this this pertains to you too, actually. Um, the revised budget meeting schedule I have um, Tuesday, January 22nd, instead of Monday the 21st, because that's Martin Luther King Day, and then President's Day, Tuesday, February 19th, would be the meeting instead of uh, Monday the. 18. I also moved the Board of Health uh, down to Tuesday, January 22nd. That fits the Federal Affairs schedule. And the town clerk um, on February 4th, that fits in better with her schedule. Uh, she will have a, a request dealing with uh, um, staying on part time to help whoever is the new town clerk uh, get through town meeting and, and uh, get geared up to the position. 
So I have a couple of dates to, to, to the school committee dates, okay. the budget school committee dates, because okay. January is when it's initially, but there's not going to be January. They're presenting budget initial, but there's no. It's all yeah, blanks. Yeah, yeah, it's all blanks. And that, that won't even include any kind of like on nothing negotiations with teacher yeah, contracts. Right. 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 February is the first possible committee. The, February is usually when they when they have a budget that's can be looked at. Yeah, they start talking about it. Yeah, it's it more and serious. That's uh, February twenty first at six p.m. at the grammar school. So the nineteenth isn't going to work. Um, he's talking about the school committee. The right. school committee. But, but you're looking at the preliminary school budgets on February nineteenth. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, we were noticing that. Yeah, that's Pressure not um, contract negotiations. That things seem. Don't, don't I don't know. I know my, my, my date is the freshest date. I don't know how yeah. fresh that date is. I mean, uh, we can't because that be for the Monday, year? February twenty fifth is meant to take into account the presentation at the grammar school on the nineteenth. Okay. Yeah, except that's the twenty first. The oh, twenty first. That's what I mean. So what's and, two, what's on this thing here? What's Tuesday the nineteenth? Preliminary school budgets informal. Um. That's my schedule. <laughs> That's not the school schedule. Yeah, so you should cross that out and put Thursday the 21st, 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, that's the school meeting. This is the select board meeting. That, that's oh, what, that's okay. what this okay. gotcha, budget gotcha, yeah. gotcha. meeting schedule is, is for the select board and the finance. But the school okay. won't know anything on the on February 19th. Correct. Right? The school will know something on February yeah, 19th. Yeah, if they will. And if it so knows it the 21st. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. won't be official. Well, we go over that. But they would come in, they could come in and talk to us. They will not come in on the 19th. They will come in <laughs> but I'll be here. But you'll be on here. the 25th, but, yeah. after they've yeah. had their meeting. Yeah. Okay. And Frontier, the first uh, public thing, Frontier is the 12th, um, February 12th, February Tuesday, 12th. February 12th at 6. Okay. That used to be a holiday, didn't it? <clears throat> it used to be Lincoln's birthday. Which was a holiday. Yeah. yeah. Now, now it's President's Day, so it's the 19th. Because Washington was the, the 22nd, AT &T. and they had to, you know, right. split the difference. So again, that's a, for Frontier Regional School, that's February 12th at 6 p.m. Yeah, at, at the library, at the media center in okay. Deerfield yeah. High School. What time was the grammar school filled? Like 21, February 21. 6 p.m. 6. All right. Thank you. All right. And then March is when they'll have real numbers. And there's a possibility, I'm told, that numbers might be even delayed because they're. They're cooking up stuff right now in Boston yeah. as we speak. I mean, we have an issue too because we have an acting superintendent and we don't have a school. Uh, we have an acting uh, consultant to do the uh, budget too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so the superintendent hopefully won't be acting long. And yeah. The finance person we're posting for that, hopefully that will be a hire. Yeah. So you're on the school committee? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we have that uh, second. Uh, Tom, any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Uh, I have well, I have a one. Well, I'll call it the minor one, but I got a letter today from Mark Capadona at Colonial. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Fun. Okay, see, you. see you next week. Huh? What did Mark? So Mark Capadona. So he he wants to pull together a meeting of people who are interested in talking about the aggregation and mainly about about the electricity and if the towns have any special, you, you know, desires in, the, in, in how he orders electricity or where he buys electricity from. Um, and maybe, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but he wants to try to pull together. We had a committee of people representing the towns that, that, that eventually selected him as the broker. And he would like to pull that committee together now together for the first time. And... And I got the email from him for Conway, but I don't know whether either of you guys are interested in participating. I want him to do so. public meetings that are posted and that get people in here when they add, you know, postcards and the news, you know, posted in the newspaper, and that's really key. Otherwise, we're going to hear crap storm when this thing hits the road, hits the fan. So I, I'm sure the meetings will be public, and but. We're talking about we're talking about things that meetings are going to happen in July and yeah. June are going to be yeah. public meetings. Yeah, that's so yeah. We're 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 a long we're a long way away from uh, having approval. We're not right. Gonna, we're not going to have approval until the fall. 
So, you know, and that's when, when your public outreach and education take place. So, he, so he's hoping just to have an initial meeting, find out who the players are, people who are interested, to make sure we have representation from all the towns. And, and, and he knows that we're approaching budget season. And so once we, once we get, you know, another month from now, we're going to be, he doesn't want to try to call meetings with all the selectmen or, or yeah. you know, committee people. So, yeah. so he wants to hold an initial meeting to make sure he knows who, who the people are in each of the towns that will speak for their towns and that he can pass information to. Yeah, that's okay. good. So, so I just wanted to bring it up that if you want to participate, no, I, think, I can. I think, I, Mark, I think, I think Mark emailed precisely the right person. Great, so. you're fine. <laughs> okay. Um, next, uh, your update then. Yes. There is that. Uh, on the oh, 48 hours in advance, that newspaper article that. Uh, about the uh, Airbnb tax that was front page that called our town ahead of the curve. <laughs> yes, it did. That was yes, great. That was great press. That was that was just came out a couple days ago. Front page. Yeah. Conway right. ahead of the curve. Yes. That's us. Well, we're always ahead of the curve. So. Uh, on uh, on town meeting. Um, for budgets, uh, several departments are still working on their budgets. Uh, the town clerk, along with the elections uh, line item, and the assessors, we did receive the police departments today. Um, the town clerk and assessors' budgets will have substantial changes based on providing backup position, backup for these positions of responsibility. As per my budget memo, I have submitted level-funded budgets for the rest of those that have not been submitted. Moderator, Select Board, Reserve Fund, Town Audit, ZBA, Ag, Com, EMD, and Historical Commission. Uh, for the veterans account, we are currently providing Chapter 115 benefits to only one veteran at a cost of 4284 I am planning to budget conservatively for two veterans in case someone getting benefits moves into the community, uh, raising last year's benefits budget of 5,500 to 8,568. I'm also going to start including the cost of two grave flag medallions per year, a total cost of $50 as part of the veterans graves flag sub account. Uh, within the veterans account based on conversations with uh, Don Graham, our veterans flag officer. As you know and was just mentioned, Governor Baker has signed the short-term rental legislation. We can now move forward with setting an occupancy excise rate for short-term rentals. We will need to make a policy decision regarding whether and how this would affect licensed and permitted bed and breakfasts. Uh, it could be an incentive to get Airbnb units licensed and inspected. One question is whether we want to simply use the maximum rate set by the state, 6%, or whether we need a broader conversation, perhaps including people who run bed and breakfast operations, as well as those who use Airbnb, Airbnb or similar services. This could lead to a warrant article for the upcoming town meeting. For your easy reference, the town, town meeting approved the article, and I have the, the language there mm -hmm. for you. Uh, under departmental news, I've speaking, signed up. Speaking, speaking uh, of town meeting warrant articles, um, I, I think we should, you know, Ginny, Ginny is, is retiring at the end of the Yeah, the foundation. Year. Okay. Well, well, okay. And aside from that, uh, I, I think we should also try to get a warrant article to have our town clerk appointed rather than elected. We tried that already. We tried. Yeah. Didn't work out. But um, that's, that's a very important position, and an elected position there is no good. It has to be an appointed position based, based on experience, not on popularity. Because it's an extremely important job and getting ever more important, especially in the small towns. You can't have someone coming into that position who just who just wins the position because they run for it. That's that's short sighted. And if we don't do anything, that's what would happen. It would be voted. It would be elected. It would be elected again. Yeah. Well, 
the election it would have to happen anyway. Uh, unless we had a special town meeting and an election beforehand. It, it has to be voted at a town meeting and then there has to be a ballot vote. Um, That's where it lost, right? Something like, yeah. 30 days afterward or, yeah. or, or something like that. So that's the, that's the timing issue with that. Uh, but yeah, we can talk about the, uh, yeah, let, let's talk put about a, uh, yeah. put a placeholder on for that. Uh, in departmental news, I have signed up for the two remaining three-day procurement classes this spring for my MCPPO designation, Massachusetts Certified Public Procurement Officer. One is at the beginning of February, the other is at the end. They are in Lowell and Boston, and I plan to pay for my own accommodations rather than commute. They, they're not offering the spring uh, courses out here in the West, even by video conference, which I mm -hmm. commented on, and they said they didn't have enough money, so I sent something to Senator Hines saying, Gee, it would be great if you could give them more money. And they said, well, they need to request the money. So I sent that to them back. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the Conway Grammar School water tank is now slated to be relined next summer. Since the tank was meant to be lined, I have an email out asking whether Mass Tank can assure <coughs> us that using an unlined water tank for five or six months will not compromise the integrity of the tank. So that's what we have now. We have an unlined tank. Yeah. We tried. He yeah. tried. Everybody yeah. tried. Best of intentions. And that's why I think it will take two weeks to dry it out yeah. this summer. So it's going to be a much longer process to dry it out this but, summer. But it already passed initial water quality tests and they're drinking from the fountains again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. So we're not paying for bottled water, which is really good. And uh, yeah, we can deal with this, uh, hopefully. But. Um, yeah, what a, what a travesty, the whole thing, what a travesty. The amount of time that this is sucked up from so many people, and we're just not equipped organizationally to have to deal with things like this. It's just... So, um, I have been discussing the possibility of a shared human resources function with the four frontier towns and the superintendent uh, without objection, or I can put this on the agenda for next time, I'd like to apply as the lead town for a state efficiency and regionalization grant to study the possibility. And that's just based on the fact that neither, none of the four towns nor Frontier has a designated HR professional and even one shared position would be more than what we have now. The question is, what would it look like? What would the job description be? What would the responsibilities be? All of that structural stuff. So um, I'd like that uh, explored in a, in a study and we might be able to get a grant for it. So, uh, I, I, so I'm planning does anybody to, uh, have any to do that. No. Mm -hmm. no, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, human resources, again, is something that is getting ever more complex and um, I, I, would, I would like uh, to see us do that. Phil, do you have anything on that? Um, we just need to stay away from UMass, because we tried, they, they, they did the efficiency uh, thing for, for, yeah, for regional, this regionalizing. Would be, this would not be oh, a, no, no, that, a, that a UMass planning department project. That, was, that did not work well, and that was not an acceptable product that they gave to us, and that's why we ended up not paying for it, and it was, it's bad, that was bad. And yeah, now this, uh, this has nothing to do with UMass. Uh, finally, the new FERCOG wage and salary survey is out, if anyone would like to look at it. I have an electronic version I can send and one paper copy over there. Uh, just let me know. Okay. So the, the only thing, that the, the gray flag medallions, I, I could take you to two dozen Revolutionary War veterans in town that are buried in town that don't have any medallions, that don't have any recognition whatsoever. Well, if you but let me know, I can let Don Graham know, and he would be happy to know. Yes. There may not be any Revolutionary War medallions. And there's Civil War veterans that are missing theirs, too. And I read something about because they're made of bronze, they were, some, they, they've been scavenged from various cemeteries. Oh, they're now using bronze-plated Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. 
I don't know. That's all. Do we, have any, do we have any comments from the selectmen? No? No. Good. No comments on my report? Oh. No comments. I Thanks. guess those are... Uh, no comments. Uh, we got mail. Uh, let's see what we got here. And this, this, this is also a, a piece of mail. I've got it on the agenda for next week, but you might as well mention it because we have materials available from the planning board. Okay, um, yeah, okay. We've received an application from Nexamp for a six megawatt DC solar installation on Main Poland Road. Um, the site plan review process has a provision for receiving input from your department for this project. We have placed copies of the full application in the mailbox and a set of site plans are available from Lisa. Okay, we will be scheduling a public hearing for abutters and interested parties to submit comments as well. A preliminary response within 35 days would be appreciated. And this is dated uh, as of Friday. Okay. That's to the select board, a response from the select board? Yes. Yeah. This, so, this was sent to uh, um, the uh, fire chief, police chief, highway assessors, ambulance, building inspector. Everybody. So I thought there's a moratorium. The, there's a moratorium on hooking up to this to substation that they need to hook up to and that, that whatever would help them. So it, it's not a no. That's Wendell. So that's a, when, Wendell is being blocked for a different reason having to do with the substation. But the allocation of solar in Western Massachusetts sold out almost immediately when it became right. available. And Nexian wasn't in a position yet to buy any. You know, they haven't done all of their paperwork. But they're choosing to continue with their design in preparation in hopes that the legislature and the department of the DOER and the DPU will solve this allocation problem and they will then be ready to, to buy future allocation when it becomes available. So, so many other projects, okay. some in Conway, have been canceled, right? And the tragedy yeah. If you believe solar is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but Nexamp is continuing with their project just in anticipation of this problem being solved. So when will we be hearing from the... Uh, uh, um, D the DPA? No, next door. Assessor on a tax rate study and the consultant uh, recommendation on taxes, the, the tax rate for this project, and that's where we left this. I know the Conservation Commission is meeting tomorrow and talk about it. That's, yeah, that, um, the, the assessor they're, is they're in handy. conversation. Yeah. I know that. That's all I know. They're in conversation. So all that's right. my comment to them. Okay, we've got. Uh, I think you've all got a copy of this for the MMA um, conference that starts um, a week from Friday. Um, usually a very good, uh, very good meeting. Uh, you know, both got a copy of the Beacon. Uh, everybody in town got this letter from FEMA okay, uh, about the Deerfield Watershed Discovery Meetings. Okay, that's available. I think uh, Tom has a copy of it as well. Yeah, our, uh, our interests will be represented by Kimberly McPhee, the Natural Resources Planner at the college, who's done all of the river studies. Mm -hmm including several for Conway. We got a letter from uh, the City of Northampton uh, Department of Public Works uh, concerning right of first refusal for Chapter 61 land conversions. Um, it's just about uh, land that they... Uh, if, uh, if, if anybody wants to uh, give the town the right of first refusal, the City of Northampton would like that to be transferred to them so they can buy it. So that's so they're acquiring the, land. Around there's more the to it than that, though. They, that if there's a change in use in any of a, a, a select list of properties, yeah. the, we have a vested right of first refusal. Yes. If there's a change in use, and I didn't that's know that. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. some of those are properties that we. Do, I mean, do we do we keep score on any? If they, do we keep a lookout if any of those properties ever? Well, they have to notify. Yeah, they have to notify. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. And there is an extensive process. Yes. Yeah. On yeah. the town side. Yeah. But. Okay. Announcements. We have any announcements? No announcements. Okay. Next meeting is uh, January the 14th here in the town hall uh, for more budget meetings. Mm -hmm. Public safety. Public safety, uh, yes. Okay, if there's no further business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye.